you know, one of the cool things about OBS Studio that I have seen recently is some of the just really neat motion effects that you can do with third-party plugins. And one of the biggest issues with Streamlabs OBS was the fact that you can't use these plugins in Streamlabs OBS to get the same cool effects. But one of the things that Streamlabs OBS has just come out with is a motion effects transition that allows you to do some of the same motion stuff that you can do in OBS Studio. It really gives your stream a custom look. And I want to show you how you can set it up today and use it to do a few different things. So if you're interested in that, then stay tuned. All right, so what does motion effects do for you? Well, it's a great transition that you can use to move a nested scene or a source from one main scene to another area in another scene within your canvas. And what I've done here, I've got my intermission uh, screen here. And then what we'll do is we'll move to my game scene. You should see my webcam move over. So you see how it just moved over from one area in the canvas over to the right which is really neat in how it does it. And it's really simple to set up. All right, so how do you make this transition? Well, it's pretty easy. Go to the gear above your uh, scene list, click edit scene transition, and then add a transition. And we're gonna call this uh, motion number two. And the type of transition, you wanna make it motion. And then here, the duration is how long it will take to move your source or your nested scene from one spot to another. And, uh, you know, add it 300s by default. If you add it, you know, say something like a thousand or something, it really kind of gives it a weird, uh, crazy effect. Uh, but, you know, it's something that you can play with. And then acceleration X and Y is how quickly you want your scene or your source to move along a certain axis. Of course, X would be horizontal and Y would be vertical. And you could have it slow or you can have it fast. And what this will do is it will give you kind of, instead of, instead of it being uh, neutral here where it would be just a straight line from point A to point B, it would actually give you somewhat of a curve and you can shape that curve using these two bars. So if you wanted one to be really slow at the you know the, on your x at the start and you wanted it to, to end up fast on the vertical you could have a curve of your scene or your source that way or you could do it this way and it'll change the shape of it uh, so it's just something you could play with to really customize your scene a lot and then that gives you this effect to where it moves your scenes back and forth and as you can see i have mine neutral so it just moves it straight there's no curve there all right, so one of the things that I recommend that you do, and it's really something that you should be doing anyway when you're building any of your scenes, is to make nested scenes for anything that you're going to use in multiple scenes. And a great example of this is what I have right here. And this is my webcam. I have made a webcam scene that includes a watermark of my logo, the frame, an animated frame that goes around my camera, and then a couple different options for different webcams that I have, my main one being my Sony that I'm using right here via Cam Link. So then what you can do is you can go into other scenes, let's look at the game scene here, and here I have my webcam as a nested scene. Now what I've done for all of my scenes is I have identified my nested scenes with a dash in at the end. And I do recommend you doing that. You can do it in any manner that you want, just so that you know that this is a nested scene. And what I've done is I've added this scene. You can go click the add button and go down and add a scene right here as a source. And so then what that'll do for you is it say you want to make some changes to your webcam. Maybe you want to add another tech source or like a follow alert or something like that within the frame of your webcam. Well, you can go to your nested scene, make that change, and then it will make a change wherever else you've used that in any of the other scenes that you've made. Instead of having to go each individual scene and then making that change individually, you only do it once. Okay, that's a great reason for using the nested scenes. And then for using this uh, motion effects transition, you can then have it so that your nested scene moves all in one piece instead of it looking like it gets kind of separated because sometimes that will happen in motion effects if you're trying to move a bunch of different sources around. Here, it's all one item. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I've got three different scenes made 
with different positions of the camera. So I'm going to go into my sources and I'm going to add my nested scene, which you go down here to bottom and you see scene, add the source and then find your nested scene that you want to use. Here is my webcam. All right. So then all you need to do is just resize it within the scene wherever you want it. And you can, you know, let's put it right. Well, actually, let's put it right there. That'll be camera position one. Or if you might, you might want to rename the scene to wherever the position of the camera is. So like webcam, you know, lower center, whatever. Either way, you can do either way. So next camera scene we're going to go and do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a scene. And we'll add the webcam in. And then we will resize it. But then we're going to put it here. And then camera position three, we're going to, again, another scene, add the webcam in, and then we're going to add it right here in the corner. All right, so then what we can do is we can then add NDI sources. For me, NDI, which you, if you have a capture card, you'd use a game capture, whatever you're gonna to use to capture your game. And let me fit it to screen here. Move it below. So we have our game scene here. And what you're going to see is I've done with these different camera positions. Is your camera should move when you select a different scene. In the different positions. And so you can use this for your game scene and then say you want to show something in particular on the screen well you can just move your camera around using these different scenes which is really cool and the great thing about these is then you could also go into your settings and add these as a hotkey so you go to hotkeys and you go find your 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 switch here like camera position one and then you can change switch to scene and just add a add a uh hotkey to it and then if you have a you know something like stream deck or touch portal then you can use those keys on stream deck or touch portal to move your screen around instead of having to actually use your keyboard so it's a great little uh, function within Streamlabs OBS that I think is pretty cool and if you wanted to also just disappear your camera then just make another uh, camera let's call this disappear camera All right, and don't put your camera in it. Add your game scene, All right? And then if you want your camera to reappear, you have it. If you want it to disappear, you just select the scenes, which is really cool. Hey guys, I hope, I hope they helped you out. It's a really neat little thing they've added to Streamlabs OBS. And I'm going to be honest with you, the video that they put out really didn't go into great detail about exactly all you could do with this. Um, they basically went and showed you how, how to access a scene and that's it. They really didn't talk about setting up your different nested scenes and stuff so that you can actually perform these things. So I wanted to make sure that I clarified anything that they didn't talk about and really show you some of the things that you could do with this. So anyway, I hope this video helped you out. It's the first time I've done a Streamlabs OBS uh, specific tutorial in a long time. So I'm uh, looking forward to doing more. As a matter of fact, my next Streamlabs OBS tutorial is going to be a deep dive into the app, start to bottom, everything that you need to know about Streamlabs OBS. It will be long, I'm going to warn you. But if you wanna know everything you're gonna need to know about Streamlabs OBS, that you're not going to find anywhere else, including things like this, then you might want to subscribe to this channel. Give a like to the video. I'd appreciate it. And hit the notifications. You'll know when I have a video that goes live. All right, guys, thank you. Have a great day, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.